Hi, this is Raymond Chan, and I'm going to be using finite difference to simulate quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling happens when an electron encounters a barrier that is very, very thin. So the electron has a probability of going through the barrier. Uh, this happens because an electron is a wave and a particle at the same time. In classical physics, an electron represents a ball. When a ball, if it does not have enough force, it will not be able to punch through the barrier. And there won't be a probability that the ball will make it through the barrier. This will always happen with the same amount of energy. So in quantum tunneling, there's a probability, which makes this different. This is the Schrodinger equation. Uh, it describes an electron as a wave and a particle. It has real and imaginary parts. So to make this simple in MATLAB, we're just going to keep track of a real part and an imaginary part. So it's going to look like this. So here's the real part, and here's the imaginary part. And now we're going to use finite difference to approximate both equations. So this is how that, that looks like, and we want to solve for sigma n of real and sigma n of imaginary. So that will look like this. And so these two equations will be plugged into MATLAB, and r will be our Courant's number. The delta x I use in this simulation is 1 angstrom. And the Kronz number is 1 over 3, and I use the mass of an electron. So this wave uh, represents an electron and is going to cross this potential barrier. And we'll see what happens. Now the electron has hit the potential barrier and you can see that reflections is starting to occur and transmission. This is uh, quantum tunneling and at the end there will be a transmission coefficient that will um, tell you how much of the wave is transferred. The transmission coefficient takes in the real part and the imaginary part of it and compares it to the original wave. So in this simulation, about 50% of the wave went through. All right, so this is a close-up of the, uh, the first interaction between the wave and the barrier. So now we're gonna see, look at closely what happens to the wave. So as you can see, you can see the reflections going on over here. You can also see that the wave is really unstable inside the barrier. But once it exits the barrier, the wave is stable and the amplitudes are less than the amplitudes from what it started with. So now, now we're going to look at how the same wave as last time will interact with a wider barrier. Um, the prediction is that less of the wave will transmit through. So there will be a more ref bigger reflective wave here. So as you can see, more of the wave has been re reflected and I have a transmission coefficient at the end of 48%, which is less than the 50%. The reflective wave here looks kind of weird. It looks like there's a break in between the wave and that it's been doubly reflected um, in a sense. So we're going to look at a close-up 
of this simulation. So this is a close-up and what you're gonna see is that the wave not only does it start reflecting at this boundary but you can see some reflection at this boundary. This is called resonant, resonance. In this simulation, I reduce the height of the barrier, so thus more transmission should happen. As you will start to notice that there are less vibrations in this wave, due to the uh, more transmission of this wave and at the end the ref the transmission coefficient it will be higher so right now the transmission coefficient of this one is 52% before we look at the triangular wave potential I want to discuss on how this potential should be viewed. This triangle wave potential can be approximated by an infinite number of square potentials like this. And so as and each square potential has a certain uh, potential energy that will cause this reflection. So this electron here where is basically experiencing an infinitely number of different potentials. So this will cause uh, different levels every of reflection at every single point. And so now we're going to turn to the simulation of this. This is a simulation of a electron hitting a triangular potential. What you are expected to see here is that there's going to be more transmission since only parts of the wave are allow the electron to tunnel through and other parts reflect more or less of it. At the end, I shall have a transmission coefficient. and it is 51.8 percent. Uh, so this is a close-up of the wave interacting with the, the triangular barrier and this will enable you to see what I was talking about when you could approximate this with the infinite number of square potentials. So in the before simulations uh, the wave looked very unstable inside the barrier, but now in this one, it stabilizes about halfway through. This is a simulation done at University of Colorado at Boulder. They did a very good simulation, and I'm c going to compare it with mine. Here, you can change the height and the width of the potential barrier and this is the wave. So it's gonna travel and you can see it acts very similar like mine. It even has the uh, residence factor when it hits the the second barrier, the second change potential. So now um, Get a piece of paper out, and it's time for your quiz. All right, so this is your quiz. It will consist of three questions. The first question is, what will prevent the wave from crossing the potential barrier? A, increase width and height of the barrier. B, decrease width and height of the barrier. C, increase the energy of the ba barrier. Or D, none of the above. 
The second question is, the increase in transmission of the wave in the triangular potential barrier happened due to only parts of the potential barrier had enough potential to block the wave. The wave likes triangular barriers more than square barriers. Special unique properties that triangular barriers have. The last question is, which equation is a Schrodinger equation? And all three questions have the same answer, and that answer is A. Alright, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good day.